Hey there, it's your co-host Sid. And this is your co-host Sharfos. We know that job search is a difficult process. It can be frustrating, it's hard to network, find the right fit for yourself, and it can be a very lonely journey. Here at Careers on Court, we're trying to bridge that journey and have amazing conversations with people. And we want to welcome you to our episode today. Hey guys. Hey Alia, how's it going? I'm good, how are you? It's good. Uh, yeah, sorry for leaving you there by yourself for a couple of seconds. I wasn't sure how this works. I still don't know how this works. Uh, but Alia, excited to have you back uh, as a co-host. How do you uh, how how do you feel about resuming your co-host uh, career again? Well, I would say because this is my second time being a co-host. Um, yeah. I'm a professional at this point. You are. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So so I'm, <laughs> I'm pretty good at it. But I'm super excited for today's. Um, today's session because Sophia is one of my best friends. We met the first day of college. Um, so I'm so pumped for this, uh, for this session. Yeah, absolutely. And I guess uh, we have never had a student um, uh, from med school before to get that sort of experiences. Uh, we mm -hmm. see so many conversations about tech and about so many things. So there's definitely uh, more need for resources, especially related to med school. So yeah, uh, let's get started. I'm going to bring Sophia to the stage if I figure out how this works. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> wait, guys, I'm going to watch a YouTube video on how this works. Okay, oh, I think my I God. All right. Oh, hey. hey, Sophia. Hello. Hey, Sophia. Oh, awesome. We're all here. This is great. Wow. I'm not <laughs> missing it. <laughs> you did it, Sharfuz. I'm yeah, really proud um, of you. Yeah, Sophia, uh, thanks for joining us today. Um, Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Um, I guess to kick things off, uh, why don't you uh, give um, introduce yourself for our audience here, maybe as just a high-level overview. Sure. Um, so my name is Sophia Turbide, and I'm a second-year medical student at SUNY Upstate University in Syracuse, New York. I um, graduated from the University of Rochester in 2019. Mm -hmm. And um, prior to that, I'm from Geneva, New York in the Finger Lakes. That's awesome. Wow, that's uh, really cool. Um, and I guess this question will come up, but I, it's safe to say you like reading books. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, uh, that's really awesome. Um, yeah, um, I think, Alia, you, uh, wanna, do you want to kick things off for the session? Sure. Yeah, so other than med school, what, uh, what types of things do you like to do outside of school? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I really like uh, hiking um, around the Finger Lakes region and in central New York. There's a lot of very fun waterfalls. This summer, we tried to hit as many waterfalls as possible um, in this area. I also have a little kitty cat who may or may not join us today. Um, so spending time with him and with um, my boyfriend who I live with and just uh, getting an opportunity to relax in between classes is fantastic. Nice. Okay, over to you, Sharfuz. Yeah, no, that's that's really cool. I definitely get the hiking part. I, I started doing that uh, back in the at the end of the summer. Then winter hit, and I don't have to do that anymore. And <laughs> it's not because I sucked at it, I just don't have to. Um, but yeah, getting started, Sophia. We'd love to uh, hear a little bit about your undergrad experiences. Um, so starting off with looking back, what significant experiences stand out for you now that you had in undergrad? Um, so in undergrad, I double majored in microbiology and public health. And I think having the opportunity to study health and medicine from two really different perspectives was foundational in um, inspiring what I want to do later. And I think that having the opportunity to um, experience uh, a lot of social um, science was really um, unique to my U of R curriculum. And mm -hmm. um, I think that that has been a, something that I'm very lucky to have and not uh, an opportunity that every pre-med student gets. Um, one of the things that I think was most important in my undergraduate experience was in the summer of 2016, between my freshman and sophomore year, I had the opportunity to travel with the anthropology department to Malawi, which is in sub-Saharan Africa, um, where I spent time with a family and um, did a full language and cultural immersion there. And 
I think that having the opportunity to change my perspective on um, my own life and see how other people um, experience health and learn about agriculture and um, travel somewhere so different than where I grew up that um, really inspired um, what would later become my honors thesis I did in undergraduate. And I think that that was one of the most foundational experiences I had. Wow, that that's super cool, especially like uh, that traveling aspect and and Africa. Wow, like I, I don't think that's a, like a lot of um, uh, that's probably like people that a lot of people would not they don't usually go to end up traveling there and just to see that you had that whole culture ex immersion. That's amazing. Uh, that's super super cool. Um, so I guess um, so. What what interests me is that to hear a little bit about what sort of influenced you in this um, track, like wanting to pursue med school or be in this part of this, uh, get more into the public health and the, and the research medical stuff? Yeah, when I was 11 years old, I had um, an experience as a patient um, where I had a tumor removed from my ankle and my orthopedic oncologist, Dr. Carol Morris, was a very strong, smart, capable, uh, woman and I was very inspired by the way that she um, handled her career and the way that she spoke with her patients and how um, she interacted with me as a young child and I wanted to be like her when I grew up. Um, I saw that she was not only um, a professional but she was a leader. Um, she had a whole mm -hmm. team of male residents who she um, teaching while yes. I was her, in her care. And I desired to be like her. Um, later in high school, I ended up reading a few books, um, one being The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which showed mm -hmm. me that there was more to medicine than just science mm -hmm. and taught me about history and social justice. And I think that having an experience where you um, can see that there's a duality to um, medicine and other um, backgrounds as well. I think it just interested me to discover more about how um, the social side of life and how humanity and people is really a, a huge part of medicine. And um, so going into medical school, I knew that I wanted to major in public health. And I was so excited to take classes with a few professors that I had heard about before coming to the University of Rochester, like yeah. Dr. Lindsay Chin, and um, hear about medical anthropology and learn about using social theories in addressing mm -hmm. Disparity. And then when I got to U of R, I felt like I was only hearing half the story. Mm -hmm. So I felt that it was super important that I also learn more about the science um, and to not only complete my pre-med um, requirements, but to also do a little bit of a deep dive into microbiology. Um, and I ended up falling in love with it. And through the marriage of public health and microbiology, I discovered a really deep interest in infectious disease and kind of where those two disciplines overlap um, mm -hmm. and the Venn diagram between the two. Wow, that's a uh... That's really cool. I, I really like the aspect that uh, you had someone personally you met before an earlier stage of your life that inspired you into this career. Uh, that's like, I think that's a really as good as an orig origin story really gets to set you up for your career. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think for me, I, I used to watch a lot of Pokemon back in the days and I wanted to be a Pokemon <laughs> master. I still do. A lofty goal, truly. Uh, that, yeah. I think, I, I think that's still <laughs> my goal. Progression. A very, it's, it's a very noble profession. I kind of, whatever I'm doing right now, this is just a sidetrack. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. That's really good. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, Sophia. I think one thing I do, uh, I guess uh, just to specifically, if I ask you, like among all this amazing experience you've had so far, 
was there like a key experience that sort of helped you uh, to get into med school? If, if there was any, what would you say it was? Um, I think that um, on my application, something that really, at least I was very proud of, was how mm -hmm. integrated a lot of the courses I took were with my extracurricular activities and that I felt like what I was studying really reflected what I was interested in outside of mm -hmm. um, class as well. So some of the uh, trips I was able to take for research as well as um, I was very involved with the College Feminist Organization and nice. um, just some other experiences that were related to equity and social justice, I think really reflected also what I was studying academically. And I think having mm -hmm. both um, really enriched what I learned both in real life experiences as well as in books. Wow, that's super cool to hear. Definitely, definitely an all-rounded uh, experience. And I guess it, it seems like all of your experience sort of led you there, all of it together, sort of made up a great story for you. Uh, yeah, that's really awesome. I think um, we want to, uh, Ali, I think you'd want to take on the med school to learn a little bit more about the med school application part of it. Uh, but before mm -hmm. I hand it off to you, Ali, we have one comment by Sid. Uh, I'll pull <laughs> I it up on the page. Um, that is the book collection. And that's, uh, well, I guess we're going to ask you at some point, what's your favorite book? <laughs> um, my favorite book is actually Jane Eyre which is a novel by Charlotte Bronte about yeah. um, a young woman who uh, becomes a nanny, but in the end, <laughs> it's more about her um, her mind and the way that she thinks. Got you, got you. That's awesome, wow. Um, Sid, thanks for the, thanks for the uh, question. <laughs> we don't really mention Sid, but, <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, off to you, Alia. Okay, so, um... Yeah, as you were just saying a little bit about um, applications, uh, we'd love to hear an overview of the application process um, and what it was like for you. Sure. Um, so the application process to medical school is quite a long journey. Um, I began the process the winter of my junior year when I began studying for my MCAT. Um, mm -hmm. And I took my MCAT in the spring of my junior year in May and uh, began applications during that summer. Um, in the fall of my senior year, I had my first interview and the interview season kind of goes from fall until spring. Um, mm -hmm. And I was actually wrapped up in this process past graduation, um, right. kind of, deciding between a few schools where I really saw myself fitting in for the next four years. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually tell the story that I was um, headed out to um, pursue research with Dr. Chen in Italy and in India over the summer. And I made my final decision sitting on my luggage on the way to the airport. <laughs> um, and I think that it, it was really um, just a gut decision about where I felt um, I would be able to find a community and in a place that I felt really believed in me. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah. the process is definitely long. It's about, uh, you know, a little over a year in length for most students. Um, some people mm -hmm. end up having a bit longer of a process or a bit shorter. Yeah. Wow, I remember, I remember it. I remember you going through it. Um, and I remember this too. Um, how did you prepare for the MCAT? <laughs> yes, so for the MCAT, I <laughs> ended up using, um, I did uh, enroll in a Kaplan online course. Mm -hmm. And what I really liked about that was not even as much the um, classes we would have online, but I think having a schedule and having deadlines um, that were set kind of externally was really helpful for me personally to mm -hmm. um, complete different deadlines and knew, know that I was, you know, need to study up through a certain number of chapters. And um, right. I took my first half length MCAT in 
the spring on uh, spring break actually of my junior year and then by the end of my study um schedule i had um scheduled my mcat for a week after finals at u of r completed so in that week um time i really focused on exam strategies and mm -hmm. i ended up taking i think three or four full length mcats in that week um and an MCAT for those of you who maybe um, haven't had the the joy of studying for <laughs> about seven hours in length. So I would take an MCAT one day and then the next day I would go over all the questions. And I think really understanding the way the questions are written and finding patterns between them was um, the key for me in uh, studying. Um, mm -hmm. In the end, I didn't perform as well in the MCAT as I would have hoped or as I mm -hmm. kind of dreamed of it. And I think because of other aspects of my application and um, I think that it wasn't the most important. Um, yeah. I do think it was very hard and I think that that's a big portion of why it's incorporated in the application is mm -hmm. it takes a lot of dedication to study for an exam that is that long. And um, I think that a large part of the med school application process is about persistence yeah. and is about um, continuing even when it appears as though you may not be um, the best candidate or you don't feel you're the best candidate or someone tells you you're not the best candidate. I think mm -hmm. um, if you feel that you're called to do something, um, I always said, I'm gonna keep trying until somebody tells me no, someone tells mm -hmm. me I can't do it. And so I think for those of you who may be watching who are in the throes of this process right now, um, the MCAT is not the be all end all of life. And right. I'm sure any entrance exam is the same, whether it be your GRE or your GMAT or something like that. Um, really who you are as a person is not determined by a test you take on one day. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, and that persistence aspect is so important. And I've watched you for four years, have that five years now. Um, yeah, so that's that's definitely so important. Um, what would you say was the hardest part about the application? Was it the MCAT? I so I think the MCAT is certainly up there, <laughs> top top three <laughs> hardest things. Um, but I think what might even be harder is just how long the process is. Um, right. The actual active process being a little over a year long. Um, mm -hmm. The emotional mental process of it being maybe four or five years long um, mm -hmm. or longer depending on what your journey looks like and if you decide that you want to have other experiences between your undergraduate and your medical um, school yeah mm -hmm. so I think that that is actually what's really hard is um, it's easy to to find reddit pages and student doctor network and hear things that people have done and feel like maybe you aren't the candidate you thought you were. And yeah. um, I think that that can be very difficult. Definitely. Um, what's something that you wish that you knew going into it that you know now? I think I wish I knew that everybody felt as unsure as I did. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think yeah. um, now when I speak to my peers, everyone didn't like their MCAT score. And right. Nobody yeah. felt like they did well in general chem, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and right. and nobody felt like their first interview was a home run. Everybody mm -hmm. felt nervous and unsure of themselves. And I think we were, we're all in the same boat. And for so long, you feel as though you're competing against so many different right. applicants. But in the end, I think that you're all headed towards the same goal and hopefully you all have the same um, moral underpinning to what you're doing. Right. And um, in the end, it's uh, a career geared towards, uh, you know, assisting other people. 
Mm -hmm. And so I think it's, it's easy to get wrapped up in um, the, the anxiety that is so external to the process that you kind of um, forget about what, what is truly part of the process, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So yeah. now we're going to jump into what life is like at men's school now that you're here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thanks for uh, sh sharing those um, insights, Sophia. That uh, definitely has been very, very valuable. Now, now the good part, like, uh, why don't we start off with, um, just tell us a little bit about what's your day-to-day -day like and like sure. how it might change over the year. How does the work change? How's the cult culture there? <laughs> All that. Yeah. Yeah, so um, had you asked me this question uh, a year ago, I would have had a little <laughs> bit of a, a different answer about what my day-to-day -day looks like. Um, today, SUNY Upstate is uh, using a hybrid um, in-person and online system. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually moving to entirely online for this holiday season um, so that people can safely go home to their families. Mm. Um, but sort of um, what my day to day looks like is I wake up in the morning and um, I have breakfast and coffee. And then um, I sit right here at this desk in this room and um, watch anywhere between, I would say three and five uh, lectures. Um, two days a week in the afternoon, I have um, in-person courses that I take um, at my school. I live a couple blocks away from school so i walk to school and those in-person classes are more clinical skills based so we learn how to do physical exams um mm -hmm. how to take histories um we work on developing differential diagnoses for case studies um and we work in small groups um and sort of learn team-based approaches to care and then um when I finish with those, I come home and study. Um, mm -hmm. Right now, um, in my second year, I'm preparing to take um, step one, which is an NBME exam um, for your first few years of school are focused on um, physiology and pathology, and mm -hmm. they assess your readiness for clerkships and uh, going out into the real world um, using this exam. So I'm studying for that, which will come this coming spring. So I'm using external resources to study um, to uh, complement my lecture-based material and uh, really hone in on a lot of those um, patterns that they like to highlight on the STEP exam. Mm -hmm. um, in your first year, um, at SUNY Upstate, we use a organ-based or a systems-based approach. So mm -hmm. your first year, you study um, course threads like physiology and anatomy. Um, and so there's an anatomy lab portion that is completed in your first year. Um, that is some people's favorite part of medical school and some people's least favorite part of medical school. Um, but yeah. it's a really important experience um, to have. and. So your second year is more geared towards um, pathology, pharmacology, and microbiology. Mm -hmm. um, currently, I'm in a cardiovascular and respiratory unit. Um, so we're learning about um, basically what can go wrong. <laughs> your first year, you learn all about exactly how the body is supposed to function in a perfect mm -hmm. way. And in your second year, you learn more about uh, what maybe happens in reality. And um, you learn about different conditions and diseases which may impact your patients in the future. Mm -hmm. And that's your the stuff that you really like, right? Disease. Yeah, so far I'm really appreciating this year's curriculum a bit more than uh, last year's curriculum. Uh, mm -hmm. Physiology is a lot of biochemistry and I just, I've never been a chemistry person. <laughs> and um, so yeah. this year I'm really excited to be learning uh, pathology is really, exciting to me. And um, I just have always loved microbiology. So that's my favorite. And those are still my very favorite lectures to attend. <laughs> that's awesome. Wow. Uh, I mean, it, it seems pretty intense. <laughs> um, 
I guess one quick follow-up question I had was that, do you get to choose any of the classes or any curriculum, you know, like we get to, we got to do at Rochester or is it everything is set, like all set in stone that you have to do? That's actually a really, a really great question. Um, so the majority of your curriculum is set for you. Um, I actually say it's, it's almost more like high school than it is like college. Yeah. <laughs> in college, you can be studying entirely different things than your roommate and, um, you have all different professors and you might uh, have completely different academic experiences and different homework and it all looks completely different. Um, mm -hmm. Here, everyone in my cohort is taking the same courses at the exact same time. You have the yeah. opportunity to enroll in elective courses. Um, here we offer things like medical Spanish and- uh, Oh, wow. Yeah, and some, wow. as well as some, uh, community-based volunteer like service learning opportunities. I'm mm -hmm. enrolled in a rural health elective. Um, so we get together once a month and um, we hear from physicians who work in rural communities and patients who live in rural communities about their experiences. And um, we go over case discussions as well. Mm -hmm. This past mm -hmm. week, our um, area we focused on was the North Country. And we spoke uh, most specifically about wilderness medicine, which mm -hmm. is uh, a really cool, um, super, super subspecialty or um, yeah. interest of medicine. Yeah. Um, and I previously had not had much opportunity to learn about wilderness medicine. So that was really exciting. Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm so glad that you're able to do this rural medicine because um, I know that that's what you're passionate about because you come from such a rural area. Um, so that's amazing. Um, so what is your work-life balance like in med school? So um, I actually find that my work-life balance is a bit better now than it was in undergraduate. I think mm -hmm. um, in undergrad, it's easy to allow your social um, experiences in your social life kind of meld with your academic life. Um, yeah. one of the, um, it's easy to, especially at U of R, um, have <laughs> right. your social relaxing time also be library time. And I think mm -hmm. that um, I made a pretty um, conscious decision last year that I wanted to separate the time I spent doing academic work from the time I spent relaxing. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely spend a lot of time studying, mm -hmm. but I also find that I usually have um, time on the weekends to spend with family and friends and um, get to take a little break, which is an absolutely crucial part of remembering who you are as a person. Yeah. yeah. And I think in the end that makes you a better medical student because mm -hmm. you interact with patients it's great to be able to say you know hey did you catch the Syracuse game this weekend <laughs> um, when you live in Syracuse it's important to, yeah. to, be, to be up on the sports <laughs> which <laughs> I didn't know anything about prior to <laughs> living here um, <laughs> but it, it's nice to have experiences you can relate to your patients with mm -hmm. um, and I think that builds rapport and that builds trust, but it also makes you feel good too. It makes you feel like a person outside of um, school. Definitely. I was very surprised you turned into a Sporty Spice oh, uh, post-college. I know, we always thought I was Ginger Spice, but. Right. <laughs> it's not, it's, I mean, you're up on the sports ball now and I'm like, whoa, who is she? <laughs> um. What would you say life is like at SUNY Upstate specifically compared to other uh, medical universities? Yeah, so um, I don't have uh, too much uh, experience to compare to with other medical universities, but I find that mm -hmm. at Upstate, we have a very collaborative learning environment. Um, people are very willing to share um, study guides, to share electronic, uh, you know, um, recordings of lectures to share anything they have. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like the faculty and staff are very invested in our success. Um, I feel like people really mean it when they say, if something's not working here, please tell us and we'll try mm -hmm. to fix it. 
Yeah. Um, and I think that that's very exciting to have people that you feel like are investing in you as much as you're investing in your own studies. Definitely. Yeah. So I've, I've really enjoyed um, the culture here at Upstate. Yeah. Um, it's, it's really nice to also, um, Upstate is, uh, has, doesn't have an undergraduate contingent, but they have other professional tracks. So there's the College of Medicine, but we also have a nursing program, a PA program, uh, mm -hmm. a radiology technology program. We have um, lab tech programs. So we have the opportunity to um, get to know and interact with people across disciplines who are all interested in medicine in some degree or health in some degree. And so that's really um, special as well. That's wow. great. <laughs> yeah, the, that's uh, that's definitely cool. Uh, seems like you have a lot of the resources like uh, available to you, uh, which is pretty awesome. Um, so uh, you mentioned a lot about the things that you enjoy and you're liking and uh, um, and all the good parts. So want to ask you, what are the things on the other side that you may not be as excited about slash you hate? Uh, <laughs> so, uh, things that future applicants should be worried should be warned about. Any, anything like that? Yeah, um, I think that uh, going into the medical school application process, mm -hmm. uh, you know that there's going to be a lot of uh, material and a lot of studying. I mm -hmm. think um, something you don't realize when you're <laughs> excited to start medical school is you're thinking about, oh, I'm gonna learn about these very well-known mm -hmm. um, diseases, or I'm going to learn about how to um, diagnose someone with cancer. But what you don't think you're going to learn is 35 different kinds of anemia. And mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of <laughs> stuff that's sort of very detail-oriented and very nuanced. Right. So, um, and I don't, I don't think I would say that's something I hate, but I think it was a bit unexpected. Um, yeah. I really find that um, there are units that aren't as much my favorite and there are things I really like a lot more. But I think that that all becomes part of deciding what specialty you're going to pursue. Mm -hmm. And um, it's okay as a medical student to feel like you aren't interested in certain aspects of medicine or you're not... Um, interested in having certain types of interactions with patients and you have more of a preference for something else. And I think that that's wonderful because in the end, we need specialists of all different kinds in order to um, have people that know enough about these very nuanced and detailed um, conditions to mm -hmm. properly care for them. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I definitely like the specialization aspect. There's definitely like a, it definitely seems like a very specialized field. Like eventually you're going to specialize in something and I guess be practicing in that way. Uh, I guess that's like how my external viewpoint has been. Um, but yeah, that, that, I appreciate you sharing all that. Um, I guess one of the last things we want to ask you is that, um, so what does the career aspects look like? So right now in med school, are there like set internships you're supposed to do? But I also know there's the residency program after. Just tell us a little bit about that. Like, how do you end up in the industry, like in, in, the, in the practice in the field? Sure. So um, medical school is a four year program. Uh, most mm -hmm. places there are some specialized programs you can do in a little more or a little less. Um, but generally I would say it's about four years. Your first two years are spent um, mostly in lecture-based um, academic study. Um, mm -hmm. You're learning as much as you possibly can in those yeah. two years so that in the third year when you um, do clinical clerkships, you're prepared to see all different types of patients. Um, mm -hmm. Your clinical clerkships are dictated by accrediting organizations. So you have to spend a certain amount of hours doing certain kinds of things. Um, different clerkships, um, for example, are pediatrics, internal medicine, um, OBGYN, surgery, emergency medicine, primary care. Mm -hmm. um, it, there's more, but <laughs> that's just um, an example. And um, each of those um, 
clerkships are almost like a mini internship, I guess. Um, and yeah. you're learning as much as you can from your preceptors in the time allotted. And then you take accrediting exams for each of those um, wow. clerkships that you rotate through. In your fourth year, it's a little bit variable by the university that you attend. At Upstate, mm -hmm. we have quite a bit of flexibility and a lot of elective time so that you can um, do what are called AIs or acting internships. Um, these are kind of like specialized electives where you are almost pretending to be a resident. You're um, mm -hmm. maybe going to a different hospital or a different clinical site than is affiliated with your university to learn more about um, exactly what residency you're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, these are important for your residency application, um, which you complete in the fall of your fourth year. Um, mm -hmm. Then you get a little bit of time to either pursue maybe international um, travel or to pursue um, more uh, electives and things that you otherwise might not have had time for in subspecialties mm -hmm. and things like that. And then in the spring of your fourth year, um, you are awaiting your match. So match is a process where you apply to and interview at a bunch of different um, schools and programs that are um, for your residency training. Mm -hmm. And you make a list of what you like and they make a list of the people they like and it mm -hmm. all gets put into a computer program. And then uh, the answers come out and are printed in, um, on a piece of paper and put in an envelope and you sit in a room with your family and you open your envelope and you hope it says the place that you liked best. Um, yeah. It's a very complicated process. And um, for some yeah. people, they try to match somewhere with maybe a spouse or um, mm -hmm. match close to home, or maybe they want to match at a school far away from home mm -hmm. or a place that has a very specific um, opportunity. So, that's uh, an aspect where you don't get quite as much choice as most other careers. Mm -hmm. um, you're kind of at the mercy of this process where you are able to put in um, your perspectives and your opinions to a degree, but in the end, um, you have to wait for this answer on the inside of an envelope. Um, after match, uh, people begin their residency at um, their matched location. Mm -hmm. um, and a residency is now where you get to become the type of doctor that you decided you wanted to be. Um, so when you graduate from medical school, you have a very broad understanding of a lot of stuff. Residency is the time to learn more specifically about um, a specialty. Yeah. From there, um, you work as an intern. And then mm -hmm. um, if that's as far as you'd like to go in your specialization, then you uh, hope uh, you apply for jobs and you get a job somewhere uh, working as a physician. Mm -hmm. um, but you can specialize further. So you might do a, a fellowship or different types of um, special trainings, or you can um, go learn certain, say you are a surgeon, you could learn certain types of procedures um, by uh, working with a physician who's very good at the procedure you're interested in doing. Mm -hmm. And um, so it, the, it looks a little different for every person and every specialty, but yeah. um, usually after residency is when you enter the career. <laughs> got it, got it. Uh, yeah, thank you for sharing, uh, walking us through all that. That's, I think, um, uh, super helpful for anyone just to putting it all together. Uh, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> it's definitely a long, yeah, journey. A long process. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, I'm pretty sure like, uh, you'll be like having like that persistence that you already have, you'll be, it'll, it'll be right. fine, but it's definitely going to be struggle. <laughs> it sounds hard. Yeah, it's definitely. <laughs> I think it's a struggle for everybody. I think it's one of those things like where that. everybody yeah. feels um, anxious in the same way. <laughs> right. Crazy. Wow. 
but damn, that really prepares you for life. If you can go to a med school, you can probably go <laughs> exactly. I, That's insane. Uh, well, thanks for sharing all that. Uh, I think uh, that's sort of most of the informational things we sort of wanted and hear your experiences about it. Um, it, it might be time for our favorite rapid fire round. Um, yeah. <laughs> are you ready for this? I, I hope so. <laughs> Yeah, Sophie, I don't think you're going to be ready for this. Uh, it's, 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 pretty, it's, it's pretty crazy. We ask weird questions. Uh, but to get started with, uh, I'm going to take the first one. Um, so, Sophia, um, what superpower would you like to have if you were given a choice? Hmm, I would, uh, I'd like to read as fast as possible. <laughs> That's so on brand. <laughs> that's, uh, <laughs> oh that's my god! Uh, that, that, that makes sense with all the books that you have. Right. <laughs> that's, uh, that's okay. Awesome. The next one, I know the answer to, but it's very important: vanilla or chocolate? Oh, chocolate! <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know the backstory there, but I'm also a chocolate fan. If there was a backstory. <laughs> um. Okay. Um. Book or podcast recommendation. Ooh, um, a hmm, podcast recommendation. Um, there's a great podcast called This Podcast Will Kill You. And it's, um, <laughs> it's actually really fun. It's, uh, to, um, it's an epidemiologist and a med student, actually, who, or a resident, I believe she's a resident now. They sit down and they talk about the history and the biology behind different infectious diseases. Um, yeah. And I know they have- Right up your alley. Podcast. Um, they also have smallpox and all kinds of fun stuff. So, wow, fun stuff! Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's a great recommendation. But I'm I'm gonna definitely gonna put it at the back of my priority list. <laughs> no, <laughs> definitely so rude. Fun. Right. Oh yeah. Okay. Next question: the first kazoo or the second kazoo? Oh, the second kazoo. The second kazoo. Okay, good. Good. Yeah, that's the right answer. What's a kazoo? I don't get it. You don't know what a kazoo is? With no, nah, like, it's what is instrument. it? Oh, really? Oh, okay. Do, do, do. Oh, shit. Okay. I did not know that. <laughs> <laughs> I brought my bucket of vocabulary there. All right. Um, Sophia, um, favorite research project you have worked on so far? What was oh, it? Oh, wow. Um, I don't know. I, um, I've been lucky enough to work on several different projects. I worked on an environmental health project in undergrad. Um, where we got to work with moms and babies. And I really, yeah. um, I loved being able to visit with our participants and learn about their lives. Um, over the summer between undergrad and um, medical school, I was able to travel to uh, Italy in the Dolomites and to India um, in Ladakh, which is in the Himalayas. Oh, wow. yeah. And um, those were just absolutely incredible experiences. And um, I'll never forget the people that I met um, working on those projects. Um, currently I'm working on a project um, that is studying the impact of COVID on the refugee population here in Syracuse. Oh, and yeah. I think that that's a really um, important project and I think is really significant. And so that one might be one of my favorites as well. Mm -hmm. Hard wow. to choose. Hard to choose. <laughs> But then okay, the travel is so, crazy. It's just a quick note there. That's awesome. <laughs> the last question is uh, who's your favorite co host? Chef <laughs> Hoos or Alie? Ooh. There's a Can voting I thing going Fifth. <laughs> <laughs> no, you have to answer. I have to. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Chef Hoos, but I do probably have to go with Alie as I've known her for a very long time now. Um, so Thank since you. Her, first minute of college and um yep it's true it's it's, it's exactly the first minute <laughs> <laughs> all right all right i definitely understand there's the whole friendship bond going on it's just funny because when i invite my friends, they don't vote for me they vote for uh, the other person oh man <laughs> <laughs> you, better friend. you do yeah i've i've I, I need friend. Better friend. It's just that uh we have one more question from sid in the audience uh, oh no! Yeah, yeah. So who wants to go first? Oh man. Um. Oh. Okay, so we were in Danforth once. Oh no! <laughs> Sophia was trying to hold a plate with a with a cupcake on it. It was a cupcake, <laughs> and she had like her phone and her keys, and she like 
dropped in college it all when you carried you... like your whole life in your hand. Right. You have everything. Oh. I think you had two plates. Like it probably was like a sandwich and a a cupcake well, and I'm sure. I don't even know. Did you trip? I think maybe you tripped over your backpack. I don't even I, remember, but it was the plate shattered. You saved the cupcake. Oh no, you course. saved your keys, which is what it was the whole it I was, do remember yeah, I as the plate shattered pieces of it and shrapnel <laughs> ended up in people's backpacks and uh, all across the dining hall. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> um, wow. Man, I'm trying to think of an embarrassing uh memory of knowing Ollie. I'm sure I'm sure there are oh, I'm, I'm sure. I I know I know of um one time. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ollie and I were both RAs and she gave me a call one night. Um and <laughs> I don't know. Uh, said, I, I'm on duty and I, I need help. And I was thinking, oh no, what do you need help with? And um, it was that the uh, the toilet on your floor was out of order. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> you were so upset and so frantic about how to how to how to deal with the that was really stressful. You we were very stressed. <laughs> I don't know oh, if that's. Oh my god! I don't think it's even funny to anyone other than me. But I just I, it was midnight, and I was expecting like a real dire emergency, and you were like, "The toilet's overflowing." <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, it was stressful. I was I was stressed. <laughs> <laughs> Nah, that, that was uh, some really good stories from both sides. Uh, but yeah, Sophia, definitely respect the fact that you saved the cupcake. I think I would have done the same. <laughs> most of the same. Uh, it doesn't it's matter. Like, what are your good. priorities if you aren't? <laughs> I, <laughs> I think you made the right, right life decision there. <laughs> so that's great. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, we're uh, around our curtains closing time. Sophia, I guess the overall... Um, I guess one of the last piece of question is that what would be your overall recommendation and advice for future med school applicants? Hmm. I think just be yourself. And I know that that's cheesy and what everybody <laughs> tells you, but I think it's true. I think if you trust um, your inst instincts and if you trust your own interests and really mm -hmm. what you like, um, you can't go wrong. I think if you're able to um find something that you love and if that's medicine then you probably are right um mm -hmm. i think it come that's true when it comes to writing your personal statement and i think that's true when it comes to interviewing and a lot of the parts of the medical school process that people get nervous about i think if you are true to who you are and if you are honest and vulnerable i think mm -hmm. that that will serve you well yeah, absolutely. Uh, so that's that's a really great uh, piece of uh, uh, advice there, Sophia. Really appreciate it. And uh, that's our uh, that that that's our closing uh, outro. Sophia, thank you so much. Ali, any thoughts? Well, I was just so glad to do this. Thank you so much, Sophia, for being here. Thank oh no, Sharpies, what did you do? Uh, I, I just realized what I did. <laughs> Yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> we knew you'd mess up something. It had to as happen. your first. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is this is a great session. It was great to hear more about your um your experience, which I obviously knew about. Um <laughs> but it was great to share. <laughs> great to hear it again, she says. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, exactly what Alia said. And Sophia, thank you so much for just sharing your time with our audience today. And you know, this is going to be on on YouTube on our website. Um, so people is going to be a good reference for all our a lot of our audience for time to come. And for our audience tuning in and who will tune in in the future, make sure to connect with Sophia on LinkedIn. As you can as you can see, she's super cool, super helpful. And you know, she will help you see some light in your potential med school journey. And uh, yeah, and please follow Cares on Court. Connect with us on LinkedIn. Um, check us out on our website. We have a lot of cool sessions like this and a lot of amazing things that are going to come. Um, Sophia, any last thoughts to close off with? Just thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to hang out.
<laughs> yeah, same, Sophia. This was, this was really great. Thank you, Alie. And yeah, everyone, enjoy your enjoy your weekend. Yeah, uh, happy Saturday. Yeah, happy Saturday. Thank <laughs> you so much. Hey, you. Yeah, you. We want you to join our community. You do? Join us by hitting that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the awesome content we have in store for you. Oh yeah, and one more thing. Make sure to smash that like button. No way, actually destroy it. We're millennials, we love seeing likes. Catch you next time. Whoop-ow!